Hello, my fellow gender-bred man. How are you, Duncan? Ex what? Blame what I was listening to on the way over. I heard the term gender-bred man. I meant to Google it, and I didn't. What? Okay. <laughs> are we just not going to start with, you know, the... This is the Power Moves podcast. You know I would, but you know what? Is there really a point? It, this play, this podcast is currently only available on YouTube, in which the title will say Power Moves Podcast, episode, I think, 14, uh, whatever we end up calling this. It might be Gender Bread Man. Oh, just laying all our cards <laughs> on the table right off the bat. Okay. Which, like, well, it's the same reason why I... I like, when we stream now, I said, what's the point of doing intros? Because I typically cut them when I put them on YouTube, because if you're watching it on our channel, you know who we are. Yeah. And, uh, no one new is watching our streams the second we go live, so they miss the intro anyway. <laughs> that This is true. So, there's just no point. You're Duncan, I'm Colin, that's all we need. I, I think we should at least say our names once. So people don't get confused as to who's who. Yeah. And think I'm the black one. Neither of us are black. <laughs> I have a strong Mexican heritage, thank you very much. Are you confusing Mexican with French? Yep. Okay. Those strong French Mexicans. Oh, jeez. Who made burritos out of crepes. Oh, jeez, Rick. <laughs> So how how has your uneventful week been? It's been pretty uneventful. Yeah, but you saw Guardians of the Galaxy too. Oh yes. Are we gonna talk about that? I don't know. Like, is it still in the realm of spoilers? Uh, yeah, because we know people personally who still haven't seen it. Okay. This, so I would still say it's pretty new. Um, and like, I don't know. You can give like a a quick. You liked it. You didn't like it. But we won't go into spoiler town. It's probably my favorite Marvel movie to date. Uh, I can agree with that. Like, it's pretty good. All the characters, like, the characters I find I can empathize a lot with, a lot more with them than any of the other superheroes. Well, it helps that there's, you know, a group of them. Yeah. Uh, so, like, the standalone Marvel movie. Like, that's why I like Avengers more than the standalone character movies, because if you don't like that one character, well, then, well, tough luck, he's the only one in the movie. Yeah. I don't know, it... Damn it. I'm trying not to go too far into spoilers, but, uh, there was just... Fuck. There's a scene where a thing happens, you enjoyed it a lot, I imagine? That's pretty unspoiled. Drax. Drax? Drax. Yeah. Um, at the start, like, I didn't see the first Guardians of the Galaxy mm -hmm. movie because it was, uh, an origin story. Well, and uh, you also were under the impression that it was just another Marvel movie. And yeah. like I told you a few weeks ago, like, trust me, Guardians is different. Yeah. And then just, you know, circumstances unfolded and you end up seeing a second one. And now you see that I was right. I guess, yeah. <laughs> um... But I never thought that I could relate slash empathize with him mm -hmm. until there was a moment where yeah. I was like, oh no, he's a deeper character yeah. than I yeah, he gave has, him he credit has, for. He has, he has moments. And I can see myself in him. Oh, this is this is hitting it where it hurts. I mean, I've already said it before but i was thinking about it today like I, i've already said on this podcast and to everyone i know that the movie did make me cry yeah. and it made you cry too from what well, you told me mm. uh this movie is tied for like the most i've cried in a movie and that's really saying something because this is a comic book movie and the other one is an oscar winning <sighs> art film which was uh moonlight made me cry like a baby too and those are tied for how sad they get and that's saying something for a comic book uh but on, on, on guardians of the galaxy just just real quick i started reading the comic because yeah. i'm like yeah i like these guys and uh all new guardians of the galaxy just launched so i was like i guess it's time to start and drax is like a monk now and he doesn't do anything doesn't punch anybody doesn't fight 
doesn't believe in it. And I'm like, I feel like I missed something. Just po- post or pre Civil War two on why Drax doesn't fight anymore. But it's pretty easy to catch up. He's like, I don't fight. I'm like, well, okay. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like uh, picking up She Hulk and being like, oh shit, Bruce Banner's dead. Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit, Hawkeye killed him. What? Yeah. So there's a the all new, all different Marvel has like. Some holes, if you are using that as a launch pad, but for the most part, you can just go, okay, like, that's just what he is now. Yeah. Um, but the comic is, like, very samey with the movies. Like, I could... They're not canon, but, like, if they said these were canon to the movies, I'd, be, I'd believe it. Okay. Other than that, nothing nothing. Exciting. Uh... Playing Dark Souls 3. That's because what I was looking for. you're not letting me play Bloodborne. And I was just like, I need to kind of try and keep my skills sharp. And holy shit, it is a slower game. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, it's way slower. And that's why Bloodborne brought on a lot of people. Because a lot of people think Dark Souls is too slow. Yeah. But um, there was a moment last night when I was playing and it was 2am. And I was just like... I wonder how me playing Dark Souls is going to affect the LP, the, the the LP going forward, because it is considerably slower. Uh, I think it'll do both. I mean, the dodging is pretty samey. Yeah. For the most part, so it might help in that regard, but I, I don't think it'll hurt you or help you really. Because I, I played them all before I played Bloodborne, and I I felt like I had a pretty standard time through that game. I died a lot. Yeah. Which is expected. Um, so far, the first couple bosses haven't been bad. Um, the Rotted Tree, though. Cursed Great Wood? Cursed, yeah, Cursed Great Wood. Uh, that thing probably gave me the most problems. Especially in its first phase. Really? In it, well, in its first phase, I kept dying a lot to the ads it spawns. Yeah. And once I got it into its second phase, holy shit, that fu- that ge- that fight gets a lot easier. See, I think I had more problems in the second phase. In the second phase, it's just the game of keep away. It's. Just keep away from the giant fucking the giant white hand that comes out of his vagina tree vagina tree and bitch. grabs you and then just slams you against the ground and at that like I once I figured out the fight um I was like okay I'm low health I don't have any assist flasks left I've seen the entire fight. I'm going to kill myself, come back in fresh, and it's going to go down. The entire time I was doing that fight, I had never been grabbed by the white hand. I don't think I ever have. Like, you saying that, I don't think I've even seen that move. Anyway, so, I go back in. I get him out. I burn him out of just for the first phase. Get him into the second phase real quick. And I'm killing the pustules. And the last set of pustules is right under the white hand. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. This is going to be easy. I'm, I'm going to get him. He had, like, this much health left. Like, very... like A neat. small amount. Yeah. Um, as I'm swinging at the, the pustules, I notice he retracts his white hand into himself. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, huh, I wonder what this is. And then immediately it shoots out like a gun grabbing me, yep. lifting me up into the air. I'm like, oh, I know where this is going. And then proceeds to just mercilessly slam me against the ground. Now, I don't know how much you care about the plot. I, I know not a ton, seeing as you're starting with three. Yeah. But if you haven't checked out uh, Vati Vidya, I think that's his name. I know. I just call him Vati. Yeah, he does the uh, Prepare to Cry series. Uh, 
like watch the videos as like you progress through the game like after you beat a boss go look up the stuff about that zone or that boss because i recently learned things about that boss that i i don't know if i forgot because it was a long time ago for me but because i was like oh yeah it's a tree boss cool but then i found out what what it's all about and i was like thanks vati now that boss is way cooler apparently it was essentially a jesus tree yeah who uh died for your sins and he basically absorbed all your sins uh, well, of the town and went oh this is too much and it drove the tree insane <laughs> <laughs> too many sins too many sins too much sin in in dark souls 3 too many people touching themselves <laughs> um other than that not a whole lot went to the dentist yesterday yep and then i got a few more trips planned oh good yep um they made the crucial mistake of uh, giving me the uh, hey, remote mm-hmm. to the T, te- like because I was saying last time that I went to go get my fillings done, um, they put on like there was a TV above the dentist chair. Oh, you went to a way nicer place than I got. Oh, to. it's super nice. I've got a whole view of uh, the Halifax, uh, the West End of Halifax, mm-hmm. just. All the way into Clayton Park, I think. I don't know my geography of Halifax. That's not right, but... Yep. Uh, probably that, that, not. I, I, I it's, know, a, yeah. it's a nice view. Yeah. And I get a little bit of the Bedford Basin, and it's just like, this is a real nice view. Now, if only you could get the drill out of my mouth so I could enjoy it a little more. Um, anyway, there's a little TV above the dentist chair. They gave me the remote being like, here, you want to change the channel? And I was like, you've made a grave mistake. Because the entire time they're drilling me as just a nervous twitch, just I was just flicking through. constantly flicking channels. I thought you would have put on that Eurovision. That seems to me. I don't know what happened with the internet, but suddenly Eurovision, Eurovision is yeah, no, like the Eurovision hit thing. is big. Like, well, um, no, it's it's always been around. It's been yeah. around for years. Uh, I mean, the big, the last time it got big was uh, I don't know their name, but the uh, I'm gonna fuck this up and, and say a wrong thing, probably. So bear with me. But the I'm I'm I don't know, so I would be able to call you out. I don't know if they were a cross dresser or trans or what, but it was like the female looking yeah. singer with the beard. Okay. Totally forget their name. They were the last big Eurovision thing that I remember. Yeah. And that was a couple years ago. But that show's on every year, as far as I know. But now, everywhere. Twitter. Even Tumblr. And Tumblr, like, the people I follow don't give a shit about that stuff. It's everywhere. I don't know what happened. (laughs) So, um, I follow Mule's Elk. Mm -hmm. I follow Laura Kate. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, those are just my two kind of bookends. Yep. Those two were both talking about Eurovision. Yeah. I, I mean, Laura Kate was talking about butts of most of the time. Is. Well, there's a lot of butts in Eurovision. Oh, there are a lot of butts. Apparently, uh, I think it was the Australian team she was going on about butts Pro- I mean, a lot. I mean, probably. Um, but I mean... But it was just constantly just Eurovision, 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 and I'm sitting there, it's like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't know why it's such a big hit, and I feel like I am getting a little bit of the FOMO, the the fear of missing out. I I was like, I should, maybe I should look into this. Yeah, still haven't. Um, apparently, uh, Britain didn't do that good. Oh, good. Did they exit the competition? <laughs> Uh, I think the judges were, like, giving them zeros every mm-hmm, time. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I was see- hearing anyway. Yeah. Whether that's actually true, I don't know. I don't know. So how was your weekend? Or week, fuck. <laughs> I think every week you every say weekend. Week. Uh, it's the dementia kicking in. <laughs> Mine was, I, I guess, pretty standard. I, too, started playing Dark Souls 3. Well, I should say again, uh, because the newest DLC came out, and I kind of told myself I wasn't going to buy it. 
But then... But apparently I bought the season pass, so I had already paid for it. So I was like, well, there's nothing stopping me from playing it then. And I also still needed to beat the final boss of the first DLC. So I've been enjoying getting back to Dark Souls. The, uh... uh the Dark Souls 3 DLC is kind of poor as a whole so far. The first one was not great. It was really, really short. And the second one is like, here's a shitty zone followed by a shitty boss. And I'm like, cool. And now I'm in a new zone that's a little nicer at least. So hopefully it gets better, seeing as it is apparently the last Dark Souls content ever. If Miyazaki is to be believed. Unless you can Bloodborne as Dark Souls. Mm. Um, what else did they do? I uh, didn't really watch any real movies. You and I watched Spy Kids 3 together last week. Yep. That was exciting. Uh, it's a very good movie. No, to it's watch not. late at night with friends. No, it's not. I enjoyed my time I with it. I didn't need to know... That the Spy Kids, um, Spy Kids universe and the Machete universe. How did you not know that? Like that's been talked about for years. Usually, when someone brings up Spy Kids, my brain turns off, or I just go close window, turn off computer, and then just go about my day leading a normal life. Um, I guess the only big change was. I normally don't do this, and I also don't talk about sports on here, but stayed up to watch UFC for the first time in a while, because my, my bae was fighting. I saw so, that so tweet. I, I was like, what is this? So what I had this? to. I had to stay up and watch her. She's like the, the one person I'll pay to see. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, an entire chunk of my Saturdays, because they start at 7.30 and end at 2 a.m., so that was uh, basically my entire Saturday, other than getting lost in the park, which I was already telling you about. Uh, I beat Edith Finch. That'll go up on the channel. Okay. Uh, should be done by next Sunday. I think it was only ended up being six episodes. Fairly short game? Yeah, it's only a couple hours. Uh, in looking through the trophies, I definitely missed some shit, which I was Wait. under the assumption I did. Yeah. But I don't think I missed a ton. Like, I might add 20 minutes to the game. Now, is that something like uh, Dear Esther or, like, it's a little... Firewatch? No, it's a... Firewatch would be a better comparison, but... Okay. Um... I mean, it is for all intents and purposes a, a walking sim with some, like, neat mechanics. Sometimes. Like, sometimes the mechanics are like, hey, play this kid on a swing set. That's not great. And I can say that because that episode went up today. Uh, which, hey, like, if you want to wanna hear me cry, <laughs> go watch the newest Edith Finch episode because I cry. That's a happens multiple. I th I think two or three times in oh. the next four episodes of that. Um, yeah, it is. I don't know. It's just good. The stories were interesting. I liked their last game, the unfinished one, which like has a really cool tie-in. Which is like minor spoilers, I guess, but I, I don't really care. I don't think many people played. They should. It's a great game. Both of them. Unfinished One is more of a game. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. That'll go up. Do you plan on playing Unfinished One? Oh, no, God, no. I played that years ago. Came out like five years ago. Jeez. I mean, I could play it again. They put it out on PS4, and if you bought it... For PS3, you have it for free. So yeah. I could. Which probably won't. Played it once. That was enough. Other than that, I guess we'll kind of start with this before we go into news topics. Because uh, throughout the entirety of this week, you and I have been... Well, more me and me just 
uh, yelling at you and you're going, yep. That's usually <laughs> how things go. You yelling at me and me going, okay. Uh, so a- any, any keen viewer may have noticed, we don't put up two videos a day anymore. Because that was madness. A little bit. Uh, but that was, I mean, when we started it, we did say... We'll try it. it. Well, it was just to get rid of the backlog that we had. Yeah. Because putting up, you know, one every other day or something, we just had such a huge one that we were able to put out two videos a day every day for about two weeks and a bit, I think. So, I, I think we have a new St- schedule. We, we've stabilized? I think, well, I think I have the new schedule. That I'm, I'm running by you for the first time. On air. On air. But it's pretty on par with what we've already talked with. Uh, so I think what it's going to be is we're going to aim. We will have one video a day. Yeah. That, that is a, that's the goal. One video a day. We will have ideally two LPs. I'm kind of done with the quick look shit. Um, of like, here's us playing a game for 40 minutes and that's it ever. Yeah. Um, maybe there'll be some exceptions. Anyone who follows me on Twitch may have seen that I tried to stream Raiders of the Broken Planet because I lucked out and got into the closed beta that only lasts two days. I can't get that game to run. so Because there just is no one on. Or... Yeah, there's so few people playing. Twitch doesn't even have it in their library as like, so-and-so is playing this game. I couldn't pick that game. It's not there. Um, How is the UI, though? Eh. There's parts of it I don't like. Uh, like, if you care that much, there is me playing a little... Because the tutorial is single player, so I was able to play that. Okay, so you at least were able to play the tutorial. Yes. But that's all I got to do. Jeez. I don't, like, that's really kind of, as I was saying earlier, it's really telling of a game when you can't get enough people into the beta to actually test the game. Well, that and... For a... Like, Mercury Steam is not a small studio. They haven't done anything in a while, but they've put out some high-profile games. Only one of which I've ever played, but their big claim to fame is the newer Castlevania games. Lords of Shadow 1 and 2. Okay. Uh, So, like, they are a somebody, and for them to have a closed beta of a game that no one heard about... I didn't even hear about the game until I heard about the beta and signed up. And it was just by total chance, and then I happen to get in but yeah it's not looking great but i will say the game emphasized that this was a real beta as in it is not a functioning game yet okay and i kind of applaud them for that because most betas are uh here's the finished game just two weeks before it's out i'm like well that's not a beta the, the game is yeah done. the game's done you maybe are scaling the values but other than that yeah so ideally here, here's the here's the schedule. Two full LPs going simultaneously, alternating days. Mm-hmm. Every Monday, the podcast goes up, and that's the only thing that will go up on Mondays. Yeah. And I'll come back to that because only has a little asterisk next to it. There are gonna be there may be things that go up that day. Okay. So if you don't like the podcast, and, and it won't be an always thing, but I'll get back to that. So Bloodborne. We'll go up every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. The other LP, which is currently what remains of Edith Finch, will go up Wednesday, Fridays, and Sundays. And that will be the schedule from now on. And Bloodborne will be quote-unquote LPA for a while. And it gets yeah. long. Um, so, next, not this following Tuesday, but next Tuesday, we will start another one. Which, Duck and I already know what it's going to be. Hopefully, we can turn it into a full LP. Or at least make a couple videos. <laughs> so we can find something to do a full LP of. Um, but, so back to Mondays. I think... Overwatch is done. Okay. I'm going to try something new. And this is all on me. Uh, I, I think we're... I'm done uploading full Overwatch videos. 
just because there's nowhere to fit them. Yeah. Unless we want to do two videos a day. I'm going to try for the next few, because we're still going to play every week, because yeah. it's a good game. Uh, the next episode of Overwatch, which ideally will go up Monday evening, if I can get my shit together, will be a highlight of sorts. So, don't expect 20 minutes of us waiting in a queue. It will be... I can't say a length, because I, I don't know how much footage I'll get out of our last stream. Mm. But it will be probably less than 20 minutes. I'd ballpark less than 10. Um, so that is the... That's the plan. Podcasts every Monday. Maybe an Overwatch highlights every Monday, provided we have enough content. LPA and B going up alternatively. And then... In special cases, maybe a second video on some day, like a demo for a game comes out and we want to check it out, or a beta or something. Something comes out that's out of the norm that we want to take a look at. And I think that will be the the way things are for for, for now, anyway. I assume you're okay with that. Yes. Because I, I've learned that uh, when you only make 20 minute episodes, you can really bank them. Because, I mean, I've already told some people in a little peek behind the curtain, we have Bloodborne content for the rest of the month. Like, we don't need to play more. Which is why we're going to play something else today. Well, that's a thing, I guess. Like, <laughs> I mean... So yeah, peek behind the curtain. Episodes at the end of the month were filmed over a week ago. I didn't think we had that much Bloodborne still. I didn't think either, but that makes sense, because, like, you always see LPs, and, like, they're like, oh, shit, like, don't say what date it is, because you realize they're filmed so far in advance, and I always thought that was kind of shitty. Yeah. But now I totally get how it happens. When you're only uploading, you know, a couple videos a day, or a couple videos a week, in their own, we upload an hour a week, it's pretty easy to build that up pretty quick. Which actually, an hour a week sounds like a lot. We only sat down and played Bloodborne two or three times. Yeah. <laughs> but. That's that. But. What's more important than uh, the channel is uh, hey, how you feel about Assassin's Creed? I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, that's a poor choice. Because I, I have a... I'm in the minority of thinking Assassin's Creed 3 is one of the better ones. Mm -hmm. Which is like universally one of the most hated. Uh, but 3 and 4 are like pretty good. But I haven't played one since... 4 is Black, Black Flag, right? Yeah. Okay. I haven't played one since 4. So I missed Unity and Syndicate. Which I guess is only 2. But... Uh, seeing as I talked about it way back on episode 6, when the first leak, apparent leak, came out for the new Assassin's Creed game, there's been more! So I figured I'd talk about it. Uh, it, it apparently is going to be called Assassin's Creed Origins. Mm -hmm. uh, in a screenshot, it shows a player. Can't tell if it's a guy or a girl. I honestly... Hope for Ubisoft, you play as a girl. Okay. Just because they've been getting a lot of heat for every character in every game being a guy. Yeah. So, what better way... Like, and I get it. Like, don't change your character just to appease the masses, but... It wouldn't hurt. All of their games you play as dudes. All the Far Cry games... Yeah. All the Prince of Persia games, all the Assassin's Creed's, like, yeah, you know, make a girl, won't kill you. Um, so, yeah, I can't tell if it's a guy or a girl. My money is it's probably a guy, though. Uh, so it's a guy, so someone on a boat, they have a bow and a shield. Weird combo, if you ask me. I imagine there's a sword, you just can't see it with the sh screenshot. Uh, the story is allegedly 
the origin of the the Assassin's League, mm-hmm. which would explain the title Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, on the screen, the text says, Assassinate the Crocodile, which I assume is a dude and not an actual crocodile, which means the game's already bad. Oops. I want to fight real real dinosaurs. And it says... Uh, real dinosaurs. Yep. Nah, crocodiles, real dinosaurs. Confirmed. I suppose. They haven't really evolved since... And uh, it also, underneath that, says, Follow Shadja to Kenet's villa. Uh, and Kenet was a queen of Egypt... During the Third Dynasty, which I didn't write down, but I remember from reading it. So that gives us a time frame. So, a long-ass time ago. Yeah. I'm in. I'm a little bummed, because uh, this Assassin's Creed thing in Egypt has been teased for, for years. Mm-hmm. But it was... Because there's a screenshot from years and years ago of a... Uh, of a you know of a black character in a clearly Egyptian bazaar market, but that was rumored that it was going to be a new Prince of Persia game. So that tells you how far back this Egypt game goes in development. Is that it could have been a Prince of Persia game, which you know Prince of Persia has been out of the spotlight for God knows how long now. The last one was the reboot, right? Um. No. There was one since then that was a midquel to two and three, I believe. The one where he's got a claw? No, that was the reboot. Yeah, that was the reboot. What, that's not the most recent? No. Ex- exactly. <laughs> no, there, were, there was one since then. I can't remember the name of it. I don't think it was very popular and would explain why we haven't seen one since. Mm-hmm. The Forgotten Sands. That sounds right. Forgotten Sands. Yes. Okay, let me just do a quick Google here. Assassin's Creed Forgotten. Forgotten. I can't spell. Oh, I thought it was Prince of Persia. Oh, you know, I said, I kept, I said, how many times did I say Assassin's Creed? You've said Assassin's Creed a lot. Motherfucker. No, Prince of Persia. Yeah. The Origins is Assassin's Creed. Uh, yeah, yeah Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands came out in 2010. Isn't that the movie one? No, it's different. But it's, he does look a lot like Jake Gyllenhaal. Wait, what? Was the reboot newer than 2010? No, there's no way. Uh, excuse me, folks, because I gotta, I gotta go down a rabbit hole of game series that no one cares about but me. Um, ba, 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 ba. no, yeah, okay. It is the newest game, okay, excluding an iOS remake of like the Super Nintendo game. So yeah, we haven't seen a real Prince of Persia game in seven years. So, um, I'm kind of bummed that we're getting Assassin's Creed Egypt over Prince of Persia. But I, I think it's fair to say that game is uh, dead and probably not coming back. Do you know what else is dead and probably not coming back? I, I wish I could think of a celebrity who recently died, but I got nothing. I said, I, dead's probably a strong word, but uh, Bioware has recently put uh, the Mass Effect series on ice. You're right. I didn't write that down because I just don't care. Well, no, I know you do, but I write down the news I care about. <laughs> and then we get into this weird situation where you're just like, news, 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 and I'm like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And then I bring up something that I am passionate about, and you're like, yes, yes. That's all that I matters. I don't care, Duncan. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, apparently, due to all the backlash, uh, See? they've put the series on ice. <sighs> And Bioware Montreal has been bumped down to a support well studio. Bumped back down okay. is an important thing. Okay. It's not they were just immediately demoted. It's that is what they were before making Andromeda is they were just helping. Yeah. Um I think that's a little strong. 
Well, like I, I, mean, I don't. I didn't play the game, but yeah. you did. You seemed to enjoy it. Enough, I enjoyed it, but there were problems. Yeah, but was it was it you're not allowed to make another game ever level problems? I mean, because from what I saw, like yeah, sure, there's tons of bugs that are going around the internet. The animation is not great, but like the game seemed fine. Yeah, but I mean, when you're making a game with a narrative and characters, and the narrative and characters aren't there, but the shoot dang is, it kind of. Well, I I think for me is I'm always for second chances. Like, if you make a flop... You're for second chances? I'm always for second chances. You're the guy who's like, you cross the road, three strikes, you're dead. Yeah, that's two second chances. That's a second and a third chance. No, it... But I, I get it. When you're putting millions of dollars on the line, you can't afford second chances sometimes. I yeah. mean, because look at... Uh, there's been a few studios in the last year or two that closed down after putting out one game. Yeah. Um... Hell, IO Interactive's on ice right now because Square dropped them, and they published all their games. So, were they doing the Hitman series? Yeah, but the Hitman series is saved apparently. Yeah, uh, I mean, because I think... Five is doing pretty well. Yeah, it was came out rocky because it came out episodic. Because I think that was the big a big worry. I square next and dropped them and then people were wondering what was going to happen with the hitman series but then i think someone had picked it back up oh probably but yeah i don't know so you you i mean you played mass effect i yeah. didn't do you think they deserve another shot because while we still don't know the full picture we know behind the scenes there was a mess and it wasn't entirely their fault we know communication with edmonton was bad which yeah. is falls equally on Edmonton. And uh, then we have the whole fiasco with the mocap, which apparently was some third studio in BC. So there, I think because it wasn't just one studio's fault that the game failed. It was just a whole bunch of students. Yeah, I think that's why I'm for giving them a ne- another chance. Maybe not Mass Effect. Maybe don't make the let well, them get... I mean, because of this whole... Well, I don't know if it's because of this whole thing, but recently it come out that their next IP has been delayed. Project Dylan. That's a shitty name. Even as a project. I, I, I'm not going to say anything about the name Dylan, but um, you could have picked a better code name. Or any but he's project. everyone's favorite son. No. There was a bully in my life named Dylan. Oh. I hated him. I knew a Dylan. He was alright. I hated him. <laughs> like and not your like not your normal six year old hate, like a burning hate that whenever I saw him I was just like, I wanna fucking knock the wind out of him. You ever think that's just you with most people though? No. Because this guy was legitimate like Just Dylan's? No. Hard this, hard rule. Listen. That may have been a little hateful, but he had done some fucking terrible things. Yeah, you know what? That's fair. When a six-year-old kills your family, it's it's reasonable yeah. to hate them. Anyway, the, like, the only reason I'm really kind of upset is because they're supporting the the PV, PV, uh They're supporting the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Um, the Mass Effect story dlc is up in the air no like i don't know what's going on with that but at the end of the game when you beat it spoilers um they're like oh, we got a communication from the quarian vessel that's been a lot like everyone's like we don't know where the quarians are and before the game came out everyone was like will there be quarians elkar uh the volus you know the other races that aren't the three major the four major ones yeah and they're like oh well we'll see and then the entire game you're like where are they and then you beat the game and it's like oh we got a message from the quarian and the other races and it's like i'm just kind of wondering like what's gonna happen to this dlc like see i, f- I feel because bad the- for mass effect because they're at two in a row that were kind of a shit show yeah like i didn't like, I still have never played Mass Effect uh, three more than oh. a few hours total. And that was just Mass Effect 1. 
Um, but everyone knows about the hate that three got. Yeah. And Andromeda definitely got equal, if not more. But I think if Bioware is questioning the series itself, I don't. Think, I think that's the wrong thing to do. I don't think it's the series. I think it's whatever kind of work pipeline that they have. Well, no, no, well, no. That's my point. Is you like they said that the 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 series? I cannot speak today. The series is on ice. Yeah. And I think because they have two questionably landing, as far as the fans are concerned, two, two games in a row, I think they think that's the problem, but I don't think it is. It's... Because, like, look, when they get their shit together, they make good games. Yeah. As proven by every other game they've made. <laughs> yeah. But it's just... It's frustrating to see, because this is a franchise I love. Yeah. I really enjoy it. But the studio can't seem to get their shit together. Now, honestly, I say just, uh, you know what I'm not saying. Give it to someone else? No, not even that. Because if Bioware can't do it, might as well see if someone else can. Okay, if there's actually story DLC being worked on, I imagine it's already partially partially finish, finish it. Might as well. And then... Make a new IP. Maybe give Mass Effect a, another break. Yeah. Um, let, let the studio build back up their reputation. Which, like... I know everyone will consider it too... I don't want to call Mass Effect 3 a flop, but you know what I mean. Two, you know, heated games in a row... People just ignore that Dragon Age came out in between that. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten that Inquisition had come out. And see, no, I like Dragon Age. That is my Bioware game. Yeah. Is I've played all the Dragon Age games. Um, and, like, I don't remember anyone hating on Inquisition. In fact, I don't remember many people remembering it came out. <laughs> um, but I, I, I like that game. And I think so, I saw, like, when I, after I got my dentist appointment done over with, I went to EB, and I think I saw it in, like, a bargain bin. But, that, that being said, would I rather them make Mass Effect, another Dragon Age, or something new? I'd rather them just... Make something new. Make something new. Give, give something else a shot. They, they'd be on Dragon Age 4 and Mass Effect 5. Like, make something else. Yeah. See what you got. I'm sure if we do a deep dive... Like, I don't know what Bioware did in the past. Baldur, Baldur's Gate? See, I was thinking that, but I wasn't sure. Don't make a new Baldur's Gate. I don't. I don't like those games. I don't like Diablo esque games, which is why I don't like the 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 surge. If you've seen any trailers for that, I think TB had put out a what the yeah, fuck it, is. Well, him and Jim both did a video on it yeah. in the last couple of days. Um, I've had my eyes on it for a while because it's something that Souls fans have been waiting for as a future. Dark Souls, like, set in the future. Oh, the, yeah, okay, this is the one I had sent you the video for, yes. and you were like, this looks dumb. Well, it's because I played Focus Interactive's last game, Okay. and it just... Everything is like... It's Dark Souls dipped in molasses. Like, okay. everything's just really slow. And the search seems to have fixed it, but it, it does the... The Neo slash Diablo way of, like... Dark Souls does what I prefer, mm -hmm. which is there's weapons on the ground, and each weapon is, like, maybe it's faster, maybe it's stronger, but they're all, like, kind of different, where Diablo games and what looks like the Surge is going to be, and Neo for sure, just drops weapons every eight and a half seconds with, like, 0.01% better. I'm like, no, just give me, I'd much rather play for three hours and get one weapon that's definitely better, or yeah. at least definitely different. Then get 80 weapons, that and they're all kind of the light. same. Yeah, <laughs> And that's kind of what the Surge is doing, and it's really heavily based on crafting, which, uh, despite my comments during my Portal Night sit-down, I don't like crafting that much. It's been a system I pretty much universally hate. Yeah. I can't think of a game that does it super well. I don't, like, going back to Mass Effect, I hate the crafting system. Yeah, no, I hate how many currencies there are. 
you've got a currency for multiplayer you've got a currency for the uh, the research and development you've got a currency for you've got a base currency and then you like there's too many currencies can and i think that's one of the another nitpicky thing i didn't like about andromeda the currency situation is insanity yeah I think the only type of crafting I like is when it's not resource based. It's like um, I I can't even think of any game that's done it recently. Um, I mean, I'll compare it to like Call of Duty, where it's like, hey, hit such and such level, and like here's like eight scopes you could put on. You can pick which one you like, but it's not uh, kill fifty guys and hope they drop some scrap. That's the type of crafting I like when it's pre-built components that I can just slap together instead of having to go grind for resources. Yeah, because that I think again that's another reason why there's a lot of hate for uh, for um, crafting systems. It's kind of artificially length uh, padding the game. Yeah. So it's like, oh, but you want this really awesome weapon? Well, you gotta grind out all these materials so you can get that item. And it kind of makes the game feel longer when there could when they could have just axed the crafting system and maybe made some actual gameplay. Yeah, and look, like a crafting system won't ruin my day. I mean, my my beloved franchise, Kingdom Hearts has crafting and it's a uh, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. But and I hate hate that the best weapon in the game has to be crafted. Oh really? It's nonsense. Oh. Hide it behind like a super hard boss or something. Don't make me craft it. It's the thing I hate the most about that. Yeah, no. Game. Definitely like the best weapons shouldn't be crafted. Nope. They sh- you should have to fight for them. Like getting all this in Final Fantasy X, getting all the special weapons for the characters. There were some boss fights that were insanity. Yeah, and I loved like just fighting the bosses, spending like three hours of my day trying to figure out how I defeat them. Finally beating them, getting that like super powerful weapon, and then just like feeling really accomplished because it was like. I got this weapon after just beating my head against a wall. Well, like, the... So, Souls has, like, light crafting, and it has the type of crafting that I like. Where it would, uh, where it's, like, give the, get some ashes, give it to the... Well, if you, you get a boss soul, like, for killing every boss, yeah. and then there's a dude who just goes, Oh, do you want that boss's weapon? Give me their soul. That's good crafting, because then it's locked. It is technically crafting... But But the only material was kill that boss. Yeah. Yes. I'll do that. Now, this may upset some people, but I've just been consuming the souls. That's fine. They're worth a lot. In, in, In all honesty, most boss weapons are garbage. They're really fun to play with, but as far as, like, stats and everything are concerned, they're shit. Okay. I mean, I told you, in my biggest problem with Dark Souls 3... Uh, I mean, you seem to not have a problem with it because I see, I've see i seen you with a bunch of different weapons already. I'm still using the first sword in the fucking game. It's the best weapon when fully upgraded for what I'm doing. The first sword? It's like the sword the knight starts with. Oh, okay. Because, uh, no. Can't be the knight because I played a cleric. But it's like one of the first swords found in the game. It, it's just the long sword. Okay. It's a piece of garbage. But when fully upgraded, it's good speed, good damage. Can't beat it. Best sword in the game, in my opinion. But, more game news. How do you feel about Walking Dead? I don't enjoy The Walking Dead. It's a damn shame. It's still a great television show. I don't. I'm sick of zombies. I want Walking Dead to Oh, then you'll be happy to hear a new zombie game's been announced, and it's called The Walking Dead. Oh Jesus! Um, now it's who, maybe... who still watches that? Me. I just said that. Why? 
And not just me, tons of people do. It's still, I think, oh. other than Big Bang Theory, the most watched show on television. Oh, you people are all basic. You know who else watches the Big Bang Theory? Me. I watch it every time I go home, because I don't have cable. Because you don't have cable, and usually when we go home, there's a Big Bang Theory mar- marathon. Yep. That's the perfect show, because it will be on some channel 24-7. Yeah. Um, so, I... I'd like... I'm interested in the Walking Dead game. Okay. Because it's a good series, and good things deserve good games. Walking Dead has had shit games. Now, the first Telltale game is pretty good. But... If... Just so the viewers, or the listeners know, I, my eyes are completely glazing over. Well, don't, don't worry, I'm going to tie this into something you like. Okay. But I'm, I'm just saying the. Like, the Telltale games are, are good. I enjoy them. Yeah. What? The Walking Dead ones. Okay. Not, not all the Telltale say, games. Because you've panned, like... Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I have currently a ban on Telltale until they make a working engine, which is why I haven't played Season 3 of The Walking Dead. Because they still haven't made a new engine, so I'm not gonna buy it. But they had uh, a game where you played as a uh, Norman Reedus's character called Survival Instincts. Yes. And that game was a train wreck. Yeah, I remember that. But now... Um, that was back when we were in college. Yep. Years if ago. If you could call that place college. It was legally college. Um, I don't think it was accredited. It was not. Yep. So, the game is a first-person shooter, action, role-playing, survival stealth game, which mm-hmm. is too many things at once. Yeah. But it's being made by a studio you like. Oh no. Starbreeze. You recognize that name? Payday Two. I haven't played Payday Two in a long time, and I think it's when. I had bought my the shit tower. Yeah. From Best Buy and Cyber Power, you fucking assholes. And I tried to. I was gonna play some Payday Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, go figure. It ran like shit on that. And um, none of my uh, guns that I bought, or any of my profiles, or my levels weren't there. Like, I don't know if it was something I had to sync up, or if, like, because I didn't transfer files from my old tower, my old PC to my new one, it just didn't save it, but I didn't have anything, and I just sat there looking at it going like, I'm just gonna uninstall. See, I've never played Payday 2, but I know it's a pretty well-liked game. Yeah. So, I have hope that it's good. Um, I mean, the stealth was fun, but it's nothing to write home about. Like, I picked it up waiting for Phantom Pain. Mm-hmm. And to go from Payday 2's stealth mechanics to... Phantom Pain, I'd forgotten what real stealth was like. Yeah. Because in that, it's just press crouch button and then hide behind boxes and hope that you're not seen. That's pretty good stealth. I mean, they had Cone. Well, they had Cone, but then, like, Cone Vision, and then they also had, like, uh, they if you were too loud, they could hear you. And they had, I just, I'm really upset <laughs> about that. And I'm still really upset at Best Buy and Cyberpower. I fucking hate. Like, you, you can't just sell the, that shit to people. A computer that only lasts a month at most before the fan starts going or it starts spewing out some toxic uh, 
burning smell and you're like oh that's burning plastic or an electrical fire waiting to happen like these computers are literally not built properly and because of that it just spews out toxic smell like have you ever smelled burning plastic or burning yeah. electronics yeah immediately there's a problem yeah usually and I just don't know how they can ship this product and expect to get paid $800 and then just ship a f literally something that spews forth toxic gas now I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you Duncan I zoned out on a level that I thought not possible because the last I remember we were talking about Payday 2 and now you're talking about com your computer trying to kill you and I'm lost at how we made that connection. It was just... There's the conspiracy board and then there's just tack here, tack here, <laughs> tack here. And there's just tacks and string all over the place, and none of them seem to connect. And I think I just wanted to complain about Best Buy and their shitty business partners. Fair. So I, I, I got a question for you, Duncan. Okay. It, it's going to be hard for us to answer this, as we are, you know, we're, we're gamers. And I hate saying that. That's my are least we? favorite term in the world. Yes. I mean... We, we don't make money, but we technically have a job where we play games for a living. Actually, I can't say for a living. I was going to say, we, don't, we don't make it. a living off of it. We don't make anything off of it. No. Maybe you should start monetizing the videos. What? Just out of curiosity. Just to see how many copyright strikes we can be hit with? We should still be fine. I, I do good. I, I do my best. To avoid it, um, but so there was a there was a poll done recently. Okay, I, and every time I see that there's a, a poll, yeah. For yeah. step one, before you even look at the numbers, look at the sample size. Yeah, because if it's not big enough, who gives a fuck what the numbers are? Uh, but this was a reasonable size; it was over two thousand people. Okay, which, which uh, for the population of the United States is a reasonable sample size. I guess. There's an equation that breaks down what is a, a fair okay. sample size, and this number is within the, like, yeah, that's a, you know, maybe some cities will differ, but as a whole, decent number. Uh, and they, it, it's a, a poll on console awareness, oh. which was giving numbers that I was like, Excuse me, what? Console awareness. So, for each of these categories, from my understanding, it was 2,000 of each. Okay. So, I, I think that would technically mean 6,000 total. Um, they talked to the general populace, mm -hmm. which, it, given these three categories, I it's weird how these three break down. So, general populace, non-gamers, and gamers. So I don't know who the fuck they talk to because who technically, well, 100% of people are gamers or non-gamers. Yeah. So I don't know who general populace is outside of those two things. In unless they mean, you know, maybe I skimmed over this part in the article, but maybe gamers were someone who plays games X amount a week. Okay. Um, that would make sense, yes. And the general populace is like, yeah, like I might pick it up once in a while. But they're not spending like their entire weekend playing a game yeah like we do so they asked them have you heard of the ps4 the xbox one the nintendo switch ps4 pro scorpio or none mm. and the numbers are fucking baffling oh <laughs> so for general populace how many people do you think have heard of the Scorpio. Wait, you want me to give you an actual number? Yeah, just ballpark it. Now, I'm sure this number will change when it actually gets announced in a couple weeks. Like, formally announced, anyway. Yeah. 
Out of 2,000 people? Yeah. Well, the, the percentage, not, a, oh, the, not percentage. the number of people. Um, 25%? All right, you're wrong, but... How about PS4 Pro? It's actually been out for a while. 10%? Okay, the Switch. The new hotness, sound like hotcakes. Thirty percent, twenty-two. Okay. Xbox One, sixty-one. PS Four, leading the charge, but still only sixty-nine percent of people have heard of the PlayStation Four. Okay. Which, it's hard for me to look at because I don't, I don't speak to anyone who is general populace. Everyone I know plays games. Yeah. Everyone we know either has a PC, an Xbox. A PlayStation or... Switch. Some Nintendo thing. Yeah. And, well, I mean, we also work in the art industry, so... Yeah. But, fuck the non-gamers thing, because I get that non-gamers would not know things. Because, look, I don't know things about the fashion industry. So, yeah. if someone was into fashion, I don't expect them to know anything about the gaming world. Totally fair. Um, but gamers polled. Okay. And this is where I discovered they had a pretty loose definition of gamer only 77 percent knew what a playstation 4 was had ever heard of it you know what it should be 100 xbox one 72 percent the switch the new hotness less than 30 percent had heard of it then who the fuck is buying it 10% of gamers hadn't heard of any of them. Who the fuck are they talking to? Look, there's... Where, an... Where's PC in all this? And... Nowhere. Wasn't asked. It's a console, technically. Well, I mean, the real, the real thing would be Steam. You can't okay. say PC, because... Well, I mean, there are games that aren't There on... are, but... Look, if you play on PC, you, you have Steam. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a given. I mean... But but still, even if you use Steam, how have you never heard of any console? Like, even if you're a phone gamer, how have you never heard... E look, your parents and my parents who don't play games... Don't know shit about them. My dad plays. All right. Well, so is my dad too, to be honest. But, um, I'll go. Oh, the PlayStation. They'll go. Yeah, I know. Like they know that's they a know, thing. Yeah. They'll. Know, they know Nintendo because it's been around for, you know, what, forty fucking years. They know Xbox. They know the names. How do you not know? That's insane to me. My mom knows the Mario. <laughs> The Nintendo Box 360. The Nintendo Box 360. But yeah, I, I just... I had to talk about that. Because I, I read two articles over the last week with basically the same thing. One of my fondest memories is... Uh, my uncle at one point had a boat. Yeah. And he was like, let's all go out and go. Because apparently he made right some good life decisions. Mm-hmm. It's a very small boat, but a boat nonetheless. Um, and my family was from Ontario was down, and um, this was when Pokemon Red had just come out. So quite some time ago. So quite some time ago. Um, and I was sitting there playing it, and while we're on the boat, and I had my big brick see-through uh, Game Boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I miss that thing. Could kill a small child. Could have killed myself with it. It was that just dense, and uh, my aunt was just like, "What? What are you playing?" And I'm like, little seven, eight year old Duncan's like Pokemon. He's like, "What the hell's a Pokemon?" Mm -hmm. It's like I, re I played Tetris. Yeah, and just like they still got Tetris. <laughs> don't don't worry. Uh, so because I. Uh, I'm too lazy to bookmark articles like a normal human being. I just uh -huh. screenshot the entire article over, like, Jeez. multiple pictures. And, and 
you know, going over it again to find out where PC fits in. They asked all these quote unquote gamers what they prefer to play on. Yeah. And it was, um, I, I guess these numbers add up. Yeah, they do. And they break down, they, this tells you exactly who they fucking talk to for these people. And also the other thing is, no one answers polls. No. I'm, I'm the only person I know that will willingly, like when someone goes, you recently called Scotiabank, like would you like to give a customer service survey? I'm like, yeah, sure. Because I'm a fucking idiot. Um, so the study shows 47% of people uh, play on console, 27 play on PC, mm-hmm. and 26 are phone gamers. So that tells you. Who they're talking to if yeah. the amount of PC players equals the amount of phone players. Well, I mean, people who play on mobile, there are a lot of them. Because it's easy to get into. It doesn't require much of an investment. Yeah, I know, but still. That Candy Crush. They're those pro Candy Crush players. And, it, and it's weird. It, it's stupid that... I'm, I'm getting upset that they're like, yeah, I really like Angry Birds. I'm like, call yourself a goddamn gamer. How dare you? I'm 24 years old. I shouldn't think like that. That elitism, that gamer elitism is coming out. I have console and gamer elitism as a fully grown adult with a job. Yeah. I shouldn't. You know... You're actually admitting that, and for most people with console elitism, or that's rare. No, look, I because you go on the internet, and it's just a fucking. I, I'm very open, and the people we hang out with know this because I, I told them I I'm a very cool and collected person, despite the personality <laughs> that I've shown on various podcasts. Yeah, but if you really want to just pour salt in my urethra. Insult PlayStation. It gets me really upset. Because I'm such a fucking piss baby when it comes to that console for some reason. And I don't know why. It just angers me so much. You could kill my parents. And I'm like, ah, they had it coming. They're like, PlayStation 4 sucks. I'm like, you can eat a dick, homo. I get so angry. But Crash Bandicoot was a good game. I never cared for them. I own all of them. <laughs> I ha- I, an ex of mine was a fan, so I bought them all. I just want to say, uh, uh, the Paramus Podcast su- supports homosexuality. I thought I should get that out of the way. Just in case people misconstrued my comment. Yeah. I'm pro-homo, pro-dick-sucking. Okay, you <laughs> took that, you took that, and you're like, okay, I'm sorry. And then you immediately just dug myself it back a hole. Down. You tried to dig yourself out, but then you perce- then just all the dirt that you had taken out or piled above you had just slid back down. See, I was kind of hoping you zoned out like I did because, like, for me, it was we we're talking about payday two, and now your computer's trying to kill you. And you're like, okay, cool, we're talking about console analytic data. And now Colin's saying he's pro-dick sucking. What happened? (laughs) No, I was very much conscious throughout that entire exchange. I was just like, where is any of this going? Okay. Well, uh, we've already started going down this hole. So let's open it wide open. Because over the past week, something happened. Is it the giant monster that was found on the Indonesian coastline? Oh boy, you... This is going in a way different direction than you think, boy. Okay. Emma Watson. Okay, she's an actress. Is the winner of the first genderless award. What? And I want to... We'll we'll praise. Okay. We'll praise beat Emma Watson. But what does that mean? Okay, so this is something that I've actually been thinking about for a long time. Okay. And now it was the MTV Movie Awards, which means fucking nothing. Oh, that's still going on? Uh, apparently. Well, how this else what... How else would Beauty and the Beast win Best Actress? Unless it's, the... unless it's MTV. I don't know, Colin. I haven't had cable in eight years. 
but now a lot of people are giving her shit for and look I we we've done a pretty decent job of staying away from the quote unquote social justice topics yeah but this is something that's been on my mind for a while and it was very much in the zeitgeist of the things I listened to throughout the course of my week and a lot of people are giving MTV shit and I'm well I, mean, I honestly agree with them maybe they should play music once in a while they should. But, okay, so... The, I remember. She won... So there wasn't Best Actor and Best Actress. There was yeah. just Best Actor, and there was Men and Women Nominated. Okay. That, that's it. That was the genderless award. It's... It's not so much genderless as why separate them. Yeah. And... So, her comment about it... I'll, I'll just... Because I wrote down her exact quote. Uh, MTV's move to create a genderless award for acting will mean something different to everybody... But to me, it indicate, indicates that acting is about the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes, and that doesn't need to be separated in men and women. Okay. I'm with her. Yeah, that makes sense. As, as someone who, like, as a, is a fan of movies and a fan of actors... Why separate? I do... Well, exactly. Best director doesn't have men or women. Best yeah. any Best anything else other than actor and actress is not gendered. It's just... Who, who did it the best? Who okay. cares what... What's going on in your head or in between your legs? It's who did it better? Do I think Emma Watson deserved to win over Hugh Jackman? Of course I don't. But it's the MTV what was Awards. He to, what was he for? Well, for uh, Logan. Oh. Again, this is an MTV movie I, I, Awards. Okay, They're yeah, fucking I, I, meaningless. I keep, I keep forgetting that this is MTV. Okay. But. Yeah, no, this makes perfect sense. I don't, I don't remember when the topic first came up for me. Because I, I had it written down on my phone for a while to talk about should awards be genderless. Because, other than that one award, they are. So why keep that around? And honestly, I I hope to see more people do it. And I don't care if people hate me for that. Oh, Colin's been to the social justice. No, fuck off. I don't care. I Give it to the best person. Yeah. Now, does that mean I want... Here, here, do you want me to give you a shovel? Would that make this easier at, for at you? At the bottom of this can of worms is just a can of dog shit, and that's going to open up too. I don't want to see it go the other direction mm. of because everyone is nominated, let's just give it to the most marginalized group. I'm not pro that. Do not misconstrue my words. I'm not pro, oh, well, now that men and women are in the same category, women should just always win because it's women. No. Give it to the best. Yeah. I don't care who you are, what you think. Give it to the best. And I... I I know there are awards and there are things who just give it to people for who are different. And... Maybe today I'm going to go home and eat my words on this because I do have to be fair and I... My current mindset on this is very unfair. Okay. I'm a big fan of comedy. Yeah. Big big stand-up fan. And there's a lot of great comedians who Netflix will not p- put their specials on. And I know because I listen to those comedians' podcasts and Netflix goes, nah, we don't want another straight white comedian. I'm like, but he's funny. But instead they'll give Joe fucking no one who talks about being gay for an hour and that's comedy gold but it's not they're bad jokes they're fucking terrible but he's gay so he's different so he gets his special on and I fucking hate it the world's falling apart Duncan I mean not really world's falling apart I mean yeah if you want to focus on the world falling apart it is but I mean Is it really? Would it really matter if the world's falling apart? I mean, the world will still be here when we're gone. Will it? Yeah. Not with how I want to go. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately... I want to shoot myself in the head so I fall on the big red button. <laughs> but the Earth will still be here. Yeah, that's true. I mean, unless you want to go down to the core of the planet and just set off a chain of nukes 
to try and destabilize the core. Yeah. But to 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 wheel it back, I don't know how you're going to get that many nukes. Colin is pro not separating actor and actresses for an award. Especially when it comes to voice actors because like if you pay attention to voice actors, a lot of boys are voiced by women anyway. Yeah. And I mean, how many well how many voice actors are there, really? Of note, very few. It's very I mean, much like a monopoly. Because, like, every character feels like it's either voiced by Terror Strong or Mike Mike Mercer? Matt Mercer. Matt Mercer. How you doing? Matthew Mercer. Yeah. It, it... No, there, there's... It's been... Anime is way worse than video games, but they're both bad. They're both yeah. very monopolized of, like, here's your top people, like, here's your... Tara Strong. Here's the few girls you can pick, and here's the few guys you can pick, and that's that's just gonna be everybody. Yeah. And they recently were striking. They, they were going to go on strike because they wanted more money, which is ridiculous for some of them. The guys at the bottom, yeah, they deserve a break. Yeah. Guys at the top can fuck off. Um, like people in The Simpsons making two hundred thousand dollars an episode. No, you don't need more money. That's enough. Holy shit. <laughs> um. But I, I was hoping they did go on strike because then we would get new voice actors for the first time in a decade. Hmm. But depending on how long that would go on, that would affect video games just every. It would, but I mean, look, I hear... And Tara Strong is the worst offender. Oh. Because now you lucked out and didn't, but like, I worked on Inspector Gadget, which means I'm animating Tara Strong and daily. all you can hear is Raven... Terra, Twilight Spark. All I can hear is every other fucking character she's done. Because she doesn't hide her voice at all. I wouldn't be so mad if they changed it a little bit. And I get that's not on them. That's on the director. The director says, I just want that voice. Yeah. Which is what made me fall out of love with Nolan North. I used to be a big fan of his. But then, because Uncharted blew up, everyone's like, no, just do the Uncharted voice. I'm like, but he can do other things. Yeah, but... I think my favorite was uh, Gabriel Iglesias yep. talking about uh, doing the Cars show for Nickelodeon. Sure. I don't know. There was a stereo... Like, they, were, they brought him in to do a car, to voice a car. And um, they were like, okay, we need this kind of character, blah, 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 blah. Can you do it? And he's like, yeah, sure. So he does the line. He's like, okay, we need it a little bit spicier. And he took, and he was like, oh, you mean a little bit more Mexican? Mexican. And she's like, uh, a little spicier. So he kind of added, you know, a little accent to it. Yeah. And then she was like, we need it a bit more spicier. And he's like. Oh, you mean like, like sombrero, like. What a shock! The voice directors are, uh, well, a little racist. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's a strong word, but I mean that's like, that's like racism light. Yeah. Racism with less calories is saying spicy. Yeah. She could have said much worse things. Oh. Um, but speaking of, uh, voicing things, got that, uh, new Deadpool cartoon. I don't think that should happen. I'm so sick of Deadpool. You, you don't want Archer, but it's Deadpool instead? No, I want Archer. I'd rather have Archer. I'd yeah, no, I, Archer. so would I. I would much rather have a, an original I, character. I am so just sick of Deadpool and... The thought of them trying to push him down. Like, I get it. There are people who like Deadpool. He is not my character. Like, my he is not my favorite character. He's... He's the internet. Yes. Like, if you unfiltered the internet and just... It's just a rising, a writhing mess of cancer. Well, and I just wish they'd just stop. 
I, I don't know how I didn't think of it when I first read the story, but I do think what I said is like the perfect comparison. Is this show will literally just be Archer. Yeah. But it's Deadpool. Instead. I'd, I, again, I'd rather watch Archer. Um, but yeah, there's there's nothing known. It, it's being made by um, that guy that everyone likes. I can't remember his real name, so I'm going to call him Childish Gambino. Because <laughs> uh, that's his rap name. <laughs> Oh yeah, that. Oh yes, it's gonna be on FX. Yeah, um, forgive me that I can't remember your real name. B- Brian, is it Brian? These people aren't gonna listen to us. Give me, give me a second. He, he he deserves my respect. Donald Glover. Um, they they didn't say if it, it was him gonna be voicing it or not, or if he's just putting it together. Because uh, his show, Atlanta, was a pretty big hit for FX. Mm-hmm. But, eh. I mean, we'll see. Maybe it ends up being good. But I am i wouldn't say I'm excited. No. Uh, another thing that I'm a little, I don't know, un- uncertain about how I feel. Hellboy, Rise of the Blood Queen. Oh, they're not... And Del Toro's not going to be the Del director Toro's and out. Uh, Ron Hellboy, Perlman. Hellboy 3 is out. Hellboy reboot. Hellboy the Blood Queen. Rise of the Blood Queen. And uh, they couldn't... Or I, I, I'm not sure if they couldn't, but I'm not sure if you'd want to get a mummy to uh, or a skeleton to play Hellboy. Ron Perlman's really old. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he is. Um... Now, the, the director they got is a guy named uh, Neil Marshall. Yeah. Well, I, I looked him up, see what he did. Um, he did some of the best-received Game of Thrones and Westworld episodes. Okay. So, so he's a good director. He's a, he's the new up-and-comer. Yeah. Um, and, it's going, and Hellboy is going to be played by David Harbour, who is also an up-and-comer, a relatively nobody, but uh, fans of The Stranger Things... Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, he, he was the cop, um, sheriff, whoever the fuck. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pro more Hellboy. Oh, yeah. I like Hellboy, and I honestly, like, I've never read any of the comics, and I never really watched any of the animated movies, but it's a cool world, oh, so yeah. I'm pro more Hellboy. Um, no, from the sounds of it, it sounds... Like, just from the director, it sounds like it could be something I'm interested in. I'd need to know a little... I'd like to know a little more. Like, what are they going to do for effects? Is it going to be practical effects? Is it going to be CG? Is it like... I think there's no way you can... No, I was going to say, there's no way you can't do Hellboy in CG. Like, you'd have to do them practically. Like, yeah. like the originals. But in all honesty, like, CG's improved so much that as long as they have the budget, I'm for it. Because I'm pro Hulk movie, and Hulk is CG. Yeah. So, I, I have oh, to be fair. Oh, Ragnarok trailer. It's a good trailer. It was a good trailer. I love that trailer. Immigrant, just, the Immigrant song just started playing. Uh, Fucking, just a hard on at my desk at work going like, yeah. So, we'll, we'll close out today on a hypothetical no <laughs> on two fun things okay here's a fun, fun one thing fun thing all right let's uh first talk about uh because it's popped in my head right now probably should have talked about it during my week okay but uh you ever be scrolling through the internet and you just see those like those life hacks life hacks of like wine is good at 8 a.m thanks jim yeah so i read one of these and i'm like i can't not try this i'm like this is totally in my power to do right now okay and I was like, if this is real, this is a game changer. And it was, because we've all been in the situation. Have we? You and I have. What's that? You get an erection. And you need to get rid of it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and this said, if you have an erection and you need to get rid of it, flex one of your muscles, doesn't really matter which. For 20 seconds, because then all the blood goes there. Okay. And I was like, oh shit. This is a game changer. The belt tuck is just gone from my life forever now. 
Because that's painful. Nobody likes it. It sucks. It's fine until you have to sit back down. No, it's great. Duncan, look. I'm pro a little pain. You get your teeth involved down there. I'm, I'm not against it. I don't like it bending at a 90 degree angle. <laughs> so, I couldn't not try so, it. So you tried it. Of course. I woke up this morning... Got a, got a got a great case of Sunday morning wood as you do on any Sunday, and this, then you just got I, two tickets in, to the gun show. Instead of enjoying it, I yeah, I just I just did a WWE pose down. Oh yeah, and, and just I was like, all right, let's see if we get rid. Did nothing. That's pretty bummed out. Oh, doesn't work at all. Maybe it's because you don't have enough muscle mass. I got no. I trust me. I used my legs. If I flex my arms, my arms would have just deflated. Okay. And I thought even the legs was like the best case scenario as it's closer. Yeah. So the blood would just go a little farther down. I'm not sure how that that's how it, blood flow works. Well, no, but it, it makes sense. Like when yeah. I read it, I'm like that makes sense, but it it doesn't work. So, in case anyone has stumbled across that like I did, don't waste your time, it doesn't work. Okay. And what's the next one? Well, it's my new current hard-on. Astrophysics. It's pretty neat, yeah. So, uh, I bought Neil deGrasse, Tyson, Neil deGrasse Tyson's new book, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Yeah. Uh, good book. Kind of. I can't recommend it, though. Because it is... Dense, probably. Yes. Okay, so Neil deGrasse Tyson, infamously good job at dumbing down science for, for laymen. Com- for, for the common man. Yeah. Yes. This book's still a little thick. Well, I mean, it's astrophysics. Um, like, Or not astrophysics. Is it astrophysics? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I got that right the first time. Okay. So, there, there are parts in this book that are definitely over my head. Yeah, no. I mean, you can, you can simplify astrophysics, but in the end, it's astrophysics. There's, exactly. It's still a complex subject. Like, I've gone through entire chapters where I'm like, I don't know what's happened. He was like, yeah, and quasars. I was like, I'm out... I know what we're talking about anymore. A teaspoon of white dwarf weighs as much as a hatchback uh, it, sedan. Exactly. Shit like that when we get into mass. Because everyone on Earth has no reason to think of mass, meaning anything but weight. Yeah. And you go, I understand that. And you go, no, this thing that is just, you know, take a dollop of it and it weighs more than you. A dab. A, a dab, if you will. I hope... That we just get a flood of pictures of people dabbing. Well, if if we stream this live, trust me, we would, because we did last time. So, NASA is this sticking? has officially laid out their Mars plans. Okay, so we've got a plan to get off this hellhole that we're creating for uh, ourselves. Phase zero. There's four phases. Well, technically a... five, because phase zero counts as one. Okay. So there's five phases to this plan. And I will just read straight from the article, straight from the horse's mouth, so I don't fuck this up. Phase Zero is happening right now, which involves carrying out tests at the International Space Station and forming valuable partnerships with various private space companies, i.e. SpaceX, probably. Yeah. Uh, The next phase, Phase 1, will focus on the launch and testing of six SLS rockets, which will span between 2018 and 2025. Mm -hmm. Phase 2 will launch the Deep Space Transport Tube in 2027. Then in 2028 or 2029, astronauts will live in the tube for 400 days. Phase 3 will involve the DST getting restocked with supplies as well as the Mars crew. As well as as the Mars crew via SLS rockets. The last phase, phase 4, the actual trip itself in 2033. Okay. What I have to say to that is... Fuck off. Don't tell me these things unless they're tomorrow. Look, I love space travel, and I get that it's very expensive and very slow. But don't tease me like that. Don't tell me we're going in... 2033? Yeah, like, that's too far away. I don't care. No, that's within our lifetime. Look, if the books Metro 2033 are right, we're not getting to space in 2033, or we're not getting to Mars. The world turns to hell real fast. 
it's, I, just, I, it's I, too far. Yeah, it's too far, but I mean, if we could just all come together, find a habitable planet, and get off this rock, I, I think I don't understand why as a people... We just don't realize that we fucked ourselves over. We can't continue living on this planet. And as Stephen Hawking said, we have 100 years to find a new planet to live on. Yeah, I don't think we're that bad. But I do agree. And it's weird. Like, uh, can we not just all come together and realize that we're killing our own planet and it's the only one we have right now and maybe we should stop? Yeah, but that sick green... That's lovely, but at what point does money trump survivability? I, I think at least for another 20 or 30 years. Until we... Until there are legitimate, like, un... Like, inarguable Until... facts of we're fucked, which currently there are none. Scientifically, yeah, you can look at, like, look at the temperatures rise this much, and such and such places have had... Floods that are way worse than normal and blah, blah, blah. Be because, because half our country right now is underwater. Yeah. Because it's all flooded. Um, until we get that, I, I don't see anyone banding together. Until you cannot argue that, that this is fucked. But I, I will say that, yeah, the whole Mars thing, uh, in reading the book, did make me feel quite insignificant, which is nothing new from an ordinary day. But Colin... Eh. Do you know the four elements that make up us are the same four elements that are found in the universe? Yes. We are the universe, Colin. Yes, and that's very neat, but that, I don't know, that doesn't... I me. am the universe. Uh, the, the, I don't know, that... Do you know how much of a power trip that gave me at my desk, just realizing I am the universe? See, really... I was just like, oh. Reading shit like that just makes me, I don't know, makes me feel like nothing. Because, like, it makes us, me as a species, like, it makes me feel bad for the entire human race. Because, so reading this book, and, like, they're going into the, the part of space that I know. They're like, yeah, there's, you know, we're one solar system in our one galaxy, and there's billions of galaxies. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. We can't even get to the closest planet. We're pretty pathetic. Get your shit together. We should be at Mars already. I mean, the Dark Ages kind of fucked a lot of things up. What are you talking about? You mean that whole age where... Well, you know what's great for science? Kill them all. <laughs> Kill all the scientists. That's not... If, if someone says something uh, that's a scientific fact, uh, and they prove you wrong... Uh, and you don't like that, kill them. Or just call them fake news. That works too. That's done a I mean, pretty decent seems, job of discrediting people. That seems to be the current trend. Welcome to Power Moves Podcast, the fake news of the internet. And proud to be fake news. But that's an episode. Is it? It is. It's been, it's been, it's been about that time. Do we have any mail? or? No, I checked. Got a whole bunch of emails from our new website that I won't plug because I don't have anything on it. But we have a website, and if you can find it, you win. <laughs> Absolutely nothing because I'm not supporting. I'm not. You, you get to find uh, what I put as our slogan. That, that that's your. Buzz. We have a slogan. We do that. I made myself. It's it, it's all the news you need with the hosts you don't. <laughs> Jeez, that's a little self-deprecating. <laughs> but, yeah. So, uh, if you uh, got something you want us to talk about, if you want to call us fake news, uh, you want to tell a, a dick story, did the muscle, the flex in your muscles, get rid of your erection, let me know. I want to know. Maybe I flexed the wrong muscle. Maybe I didn't wait 20 seconds. But, you want to talk to us, send an email, powermoosepodcast, gmail.com. Uh, follow the podcast on Twitter. Power Moose Pod. Um, it's a waste of time. Because I don't use that Twitter other than to reblog. Mainly myself. I'd reblog Duncan, but 
He doesn't really po- t- post about the channel. No, I've... Anything about the channel that gets posted, like streams, the yeah, podcast yeah. Twitter will repost. I don't know. I still haven't gotten over that whole... You're still in the in the honeymoon phase of someone responding to you on Twitter? A little bit. <laughs> uh, um, but I don't know like if I could stream because... Trying to be entertaining by Dun- myself Dun- Duncan, is Duncan, really Duncan, hard for me. Uh, oh, you mean by yourself? I was like, Duncan, Duncan we're, we're streaming after I end. I this. know, but when it's like you and me, I can deal with it. But if it's just me, I don't think I could do it. It's not easy. And, and honestly, now that we're cutting down to the the one a day, we don't need it anymore. Which thank God, like I was putting people through hell uploading Binding of Isaac plays because those were terrible. Um, but yeah, if you want to see Duncan have a love affair on Twitter, he's a, a penned gray. Is it A-Y or E-Y? Oh shit, now I'm questioning it. I think it's A-Y. I I assume it's It's, how your last name is spelled. You've said your name on here before. Okay. It's fine. Also, the only people who listen to this know your last name. Yeah. No, I think it's the Americanized spelling. Uh, so yeah, Duncan is a pen gray. I'm much easier to spell. Metal Gear Whale. Pretty straightforward with that one. Maybe we should change. Change what? Maybe. Well, maybe I I've been workshopping some Twitter handles. Some Twitter handles because I really. Twinks are us. No. I just thought of that. I might make that my name now. Jesus. Shout out to YMS on Twitter, who has the best, my favorite Twitter handle, which is Too Gay to Lift. I just like that a lot. Uh, yeah, you can catch us streaming at uh, Duncan's Twitch is twitch.tv slash append1, a, that's 1P, A-P-E-N-D-1. Uh, I'm twitch.tv uh, Power Moose Colin. Uh, I actually don't know if I'll be streaming for a while. Why is that? Well, because our next... Our current LP of Bloodborne is You and I, where we stream on your Twitch. And our next one will be You and I, where we'll stream in your apartment, probably. Which, again, will probably be on your Twitch. So... Maybe you might get a Twitch partnership before I do, because I, I I don't have a reason to use my Twitch anymore. Well, actually, wait, no. If you want to watch us play Overwatch, that's always on my that's always on my Twitch. Should we maybe thinking think about making a uh, a channel that nah. we just stream on, rather than have two separate accounts? I don't think you need to. Only because I, I look at uh, I, mean, I mean we could. Because that seems but, a little bit more poignant than having a website. I mean, you're not wrong, but at the same time, I, I link to our Twitches all over the place. Like, it's not hard to find. Every time we stream, it's linked. Every YouTube video, it's linked. Like, it's pretty easy to find. Okay. But that's the that's the podcast. Um. Go, I don't know, go fuck yourselves. That's a little rude. Are we not just going to do an anime or movie uh, recommendation? Are we still doing that? I guess we didn't do it last week. No, we didn't do it last week. Also, actually, you know what, something about last week. Let me extend an apology for the mess that was last week's episode (laughs) that even regular listeners did not listen to as it was just... uh, a natural disaster. A force of fucking nature. It was Some great. people were too loud. Some people were too quiet. After about 30 minutes, no one really says anything for the next hour. It was not, it was not good. Uh, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun to do, but it did not make good listening material. Um, and yeah, I guess we So did. hypothetical. Uh, hypothetically, go watch Spy Kids 3. The best anime. I haven't watched anime in a while. So I, I get I got nothing.
I haven't watched any good movies lately. If you haven't seen Guardians 2, there's there's my movie recommendation. Yeah, yeah definitely go see Guardians 2. Maybe Lord of the Witch Academia. I've been seeing some good gifts lately. Oh, there's always... Those Steamboat Bo- Willie gifts. What? There's just an episode where they pay homage to Steamboat Willie. That's pretty rad. Yeah. 